tēnā koutou katoa Markithia. So that was, by the way, I, I always um, begin and end my videos uh, by using a little bit of the Māori language. Um, so um, apologies to, to anyone who's offended by my poor pronunciation. Um, I'm learning um, and um, I'm very passionate about um, uh, the language and the importance of learning it. Uh, I could go off on a whole uh, tangent, <laughs> but just wanted to explain that really. Um, so, so basically, that that is uh, hello everybody. Uh, essentially, it's not a direct translation, but that's kind of what it means. And I always end with Rangi Māori, uh, which is the um, Te Reo Māori word for peace. So there you go. Just to put that into context, I'm just conscious of some of these series. Uh, people that don't normally watch my videos may may be foolishly led in and uh, tricked into watching one of them. Um, in which case, though, sometimes they need a bit of context. I need a bit of context because I'm not your average um, vlogger. Um, <laughs> okay, preface is uh, over. Uh, so day two of uh, a book review challenge, which I wasn't actually challenged. I wasn't challenged to do this at all. Um, I bent the rules. Um, if you watch part one, you'll know this already. Uh, so um, another book which I'm going to pick for today, which follows closely on the theme from last time. They're not all going to be on this theme, um, but, but this one is. And this is a book by Dr. Patrick Carnes, and it's called Sexual anorexia uh, excuse me shake the camera um, so uh, Dr Patrick Carnes is is, uh, is big on sex addiction okay uh, section sex addiction doesn't exist Marky there's nothing in the current diagnostic manuals used by psychiatrists and the mental health profession uh, that says that there is such a thing as sex addiction okay uh, that, that is true but sex addiction it very much exists um, the diagnostic manuals uh, that uh, that are published and produced uh, every few years uh, all represent the current thinking in mental health and psychiatry, uh, and not necessarily the correct thinking in mental health and psychiatry. And sex addiction is very much a real thing. I've said this in other videos. If you if you want some uh, research and some um, uh, academic literature that supports that. Uh, then check out Gary Wilson, okay, um, who uh, is of the same mind as me that sex addiction is a very real thing. Porn addiction is a very real thing as well, and the two are uh, different, but often overlap. I've done another video on that. So this is a complicated field. It's uh, it's another one of my niche uh, areas of work, and Patrick Carnes had a huge influence on me and really opened my eyes. Uh, to a different way of looking at addiction and sex addiction in particular. I've read some of his other work. I talked about some of his other work on here as well. Um, but this book, Sexual Anorexia, is really fascinating. Okay, So what he's saying is, the basic premise of the book is that uh, if, you, if you use the analogy of eating disorders, okay, and on the one extreme of eating disorders, you've got anorexia nervosa, okay, which is uh, effectively self-starvation. Uh, there's more things to it, but effectively it's self-starvation. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there's uh, compulsive overeating, which is often over-ignored. Uh, over-ignored. <laughs> is uh, overeating? Is yeah, well, it is over-ignored. Um, and I've done another video on the importance of a 12-step group called Overeaters Anonymous, which actually tackle tackle this at. Uh, the true causative level really because um, there's so much nonsense around uh, diet and weight um, and so much bad advice so one extreme compulsive overeating other extreme anorexia nervosa self-starvation uh, what's in the middle you know what's in the middle uh, bulimia okay so bulimia is a cycle of binging and purging overeating making yourself sick um, so it's it's uh, a swing, a swinging between one and the other. Now, what Patrick Carnes, you know, this is genius. What he's identified is this happens with the two extremes of sex addiction, or call it hypersexuality if you if you insist, if you really must, 
and sexual aversion which people don't talk about so much okay and you can have you can be at either end of that scale and many people are but you can also be sexually bulimic you know what a fantastic what, what a, a um, such a useful um, no I would say mind blowing but mind opening premise okay so what happens with uh, a good proportion of people is that they will have periods of uh, indulging in indulging is probably not the right word but uh, engaging in uh, extreme sexual behaviors that's not me making a judgment on the behaviors by by extreme the behaviors are actually harmful to either the person that's doing them or to other people okay um, so something's not an addiction just by virtue of you doing a lot of it it's only an addiction if it's harmful things are only a problem if they're a problem okay so uh, so somebody that's engaging in sexual behaviors basically that they know um, that they know are causing uh, harmful effects to either themselves or others um, so th that would include um, illegal sexual activities and it would include uh, high-risk sexual activities um, and things like you know people that kind of bankrupt themselves through um, uh, paying for sex workers and that kind of thing and there are also people that are very uncomfortable by the whole idea of sex that you know become uh, quite distressed if they see sexual images um, uh, you know um, on television or um, on um, billboards around you know around towns or cities uh, and have a great discomfort and that they're kind of you know, would present as kind of sensitive kind of, kind of uh, prudish um, and then kind of sexual aversion which is uh, according to Patrick Khan not according to the current uh, manuals that uh, psychiatrists and mental health profession are informed by but according to a much you know greater um, and wiser mind Patrick Khan um, no, what a useful way of looking at things okay and both really have the same kind of roots okay and um, and there is we've been waiting for this okay it's something that comes in the middle um, so sexual bulimia where some people swing from from one to the other okay now this explains you know your kind of classic American easy American uh, preacher that's you know always going on about uh, you know chastity <laughs> and, and, and then is you know is is found with uh, sex workers you know he's busted and everyone says what a hypocrite you know but actually that person uh, you know that, that's you know that's one way of looking at it but actually you know um, hypocrite is, is very few people are actually hypocrites I think actually but, you know, human beings are far more complex and you know things are much more grey than black and white there aren't that many real hypocrites around if you actually know anything about human nature and how you know the depth of human nature is that actually you know this is somebody that's uh, that's struggling with their own uh, their own sexuality their own uh, sexual nature to the extent that they they have no middle ground you know and they are prone to swing from one extreme to the other okay um, so that is that's what it's all about so sexual anorexia is sexual aversion effectively um, and, and the title is, is sexual. In, in a way maybe it should the, the better title would have been sexual bulimia um, but I think sexual anorexia has a kind of um, a, a, a trips off the tongue uh, in, in, a, in a slightly better way probably sell more books with the title of sexual anorexia than with sexual bulimia um, so he obviously explains it uh, more eloquently than, than I just have and in greater depth he's got a whole book to do it in um, I think it's fantastic. I like his other stuff on sex addiction. I think sex addiction is, um, you know, at an epidemic level. I, d I don't think that. I know that. I work with it. I work with people who have addiction to porn. I work with people who struggle with sexual behaviour that they really don't want to be doing, but they uh, they like somebody that's addicted to heroin or alcohol. Um, they they need specialist help in order to free themselves from from that. Uh, so I, kn I know that this happens. I know the effects that uh, pornography has on the uh, on the brain. Um, I've done some other videos on this kind of stuff, and I really wish that uh, you know the American Psychiatric 
Association and the, uh, the the people that that um, kind of create the the kind of canon. It's not real canon, but that people think it is of uh, what is uh, what is uh, a proper mental health diagnosis and what isn't. I really wish that Patrick Carnes was one of those people that was being listened to and um, had the ear of the whole profession. Um, because I think, um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not alone in in making these kind of criticisms. Um, so Patrick Carnes. So uh, if you want to know more about kind of sex addiction, check out some of my other videos. If you've got uh, a problem with porn, or you know anyone that's got a problem with porn, uh, check out some of my other videos. But definitely, uh, if you, if you're a clinician and you, or you're just interested in the theory of this, or you find that you swing from you know being sexually aversive. Uh, to you know, to being uh, sexually compulsive, then uh, you know this is definitely the the book for you. Um, and this is like I said, I've used the word eye opening quite a few times now, but but that that it really is. You know that that's how I would, if I could only use two words to describe this book, that's that they're the words that I would use. Have a read. Um, if it's your cup of tea, I mean it's very niche and specialist, so it's not something I kind of expect. You know, you know, everybody's going to just pull off the shelf. It's not going to be. The next bestseller, but uh, for clinicians or for people that are affected by this stuff, um, fantastic, uh, really useful piece of work. Ray Mario.